Hello everybody, greetings from Chennai, India. When we go on long distance international flights, after the mail meal is served, the air hostesses go around pushing a trolley, asking the passengers, coffee or tea. A few decades ago, a best-selling novel was published based on the life of an air hostess called Coffee, Tea or Me. My talk today is to explore the role of coffee and tea with respect to a dermatologist's condition. We will start with coffee first. Coffee originated in Africa. It was popularized in the Arab countries in the 9th century AD. But when they found that it keeps people awake, Muslim priests forbade it as an intoxicant. Coffee then became popular in Europe in the 17th century. Brazil is probably the biggest coffee producing country, followed by Colombia. The coffee trees are grown either from seeds or from cuttings from larger trees. The trees start yielding when they are about four years old and they continue to produce for 25 to 30 years. Though the tree can grow very tall, it is kept pruned so that the beans can be picked by hand. It is only when the coffee beans are roasted that the characteristic aroma of the brew can be smelt. In England, coffee houses were opened in 1600 and known as taverns, where people used to congregate to discuss news, politics, scandals, etc., just as they do today in the pubs. There were nearly 2,000 taverns in London in the 17th century. We will first look at the nexus between coffee and hair. It is now clear that androgenetic alopecia, AGA, formerly known as male pattern hair loss, is due to end organ sensitivity to dihydrotestosterone in genetically predisposed individuals, both men and women. The two drugs that have stood the test of time in helping regrowth in AGA are oral finasteride and topical minoxidil. But only around 80% of patients respond to this combination. Caffeine found in coffee is a methyl xanthine and about 100 milligrams is present in a cup of coffee. The other chemical constituents in coffee are mostly antioxidants. The clinical use of coffee in medical therapeutics was found serendipitously more than a century ago. A physician who used to suffer from severe asthma found that he was able to abort attacks by taking two strong cups of coffee. Today we know that the relief was probably due to caffeine in the coffee, which is a phosphodiesterase inhibitor. Inhibiting this enzyme increases the level of cyclic AMP within the cells of the matrix. German workers cultivated human hair follicles from the balding areas of male AGA patients. And then they used different concentrations of caffeine to study its stimulating effect on the hair follicles. Even at low concentrations, caffeine prevented the suppressive effect of testosterone on cultured hair follicles. This effect of caffeine may be partly due to increasing levels of cyclic AMP and partly due to a direct effect against apoptosis, which is induced in AGA. So the prospect of treating AGA worldwide trichological problem by simply drinking a dozen cups of strong coffee is indeed like a utopian dream come true. However, large amounts of coffee can cause nervousness, insomnia and tremors. Being a central nervous system stimulant, it can cause addiction. Even a reduction in consumption of coffee by a few cups daily can bring about withdrawal symptoms like fatigue, sedation, headache and nausea. So trichologists are now trying topical caffeine for managing AGA. Patients with hydrodinitis operativa are advised to take less coffee. There appears to be a love-hate relationship between caffeine consumption and methotrexate dosage. In lymphomas, caffeine may augment the therapeutic effect of methotrexate. On the other hand, there is some evidence that caffeine may have an inhibitory effect on methotrexate during psoriasis therapy. Japanese workers have shown that caffeine can give photoprotection for pigmented spots on the face like freckles and melasma. 
A study in JAMA a couple of years ago showed that there is an inverse relationship between caffeine intake and risk of rosacea. In a study involving 82,000 participants, it was shown that those who drank four cups of coffee per day were less likely to develop rosacea when compared to those who did not drink coffee. Caffeine's isoconstrictive and immunosuppressive effects may be responsible for decreasing the risk of rosacea. In pregnancy, higher consumption of coffee more than three cups a day is a risk factor for adverse outcomes, including low birth weight, preterm delivery, and pregnancy loss. So the American College of Obstetricians recommends less than 200 milligrams of caffeine, that is two cups of coffee per day during pregnancy. Now we pass on to tea. Legend has it that tea came into use in 2737 BC when the Chinese emperor Shan Nun was sitting in his garden. A gust of wind blew some dried tea leaves from the neighborhood into a pot of boiling water. The emperor liked the aroma and he also liked the taste and he called this cha. It was introduced into Europe in the 17th century AD and it became the Englishman's cup of tea, cha. Today, India is one of the biggest producers of tea and also Sri Lanka. Tea is derived from the leaves of the tea bush, which belongs to the camellia family. The tender leaves make the best tea and the plant gone yielding for 50 odd years. There are many grades of tea. Sometimes many types of tea have to be blended to get the best taste, not unlike blending of a good brand of scotch whiskey. The Japanese hold tea ceremonies where five guests are invited to a small, specially built tea room. This they enter by crawling through a small opening, first having washed their hands and rinsed their meals. We have black, green, oolang and white tea. The chemical constituents of tea or epicatechin derivatives called polyphenols, also methyl xanthine, flavonoids and saponins. Green tea specifically is an abundant source of polyphenols which confer a protective effect on the skin against UV radiation induced skin aging and also have anti-melanogenic, antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects. Coming to hair tea nexus. The two main hair disorders of interest to trichologists are hirsutism and AGA condition, which depend on the conversion of testosterone to 5-alpha dihydrotestosterone, a reaction which is catalyzed by 5-alpha reductase. Catechins in the tea can inhibit this enzyme activity and so tea should theoretically benefit hirsutism and AGA. So for dermatologists, it is not just T for two and two for T, a very famous song of the 60s. Nor is it T for five like in the cozy Japanese tea houses. But it should be T for all to hopefully help hirsutism, the AGA and other benefits mentioned before. Hence, as dermatologists, let us popularize amongst the public the consumption of these two ancient beverages, coffee and tea, for better skin and hair health, in moderation of course. Thank you.